Okay, here we're reviewing the entrance for USC for Tita Hall. Uh, this project uh, involved about, well, the, the main entry portion involves, uh, it's got 955 total pieces. Total cubic footage is about 970 cubic feet, which is about 131,000 pounds. Uh, it's, it's a five-story entry, just a little bit over five stories. Uh, it's about 68 feet tall overall. Uh, this is the finish. Uh, the photo was taken after it was finished, after the wash down and everything. Uh, this had a cantilevered second, or well, this was at uh, the third story. This started the, the cantilevered area. Uh, there is a structural steel lintel that carries quite a bit of the weight, well, pretty much all of the weight of the upper portion of this cantilevered area. The below the steel angle, and I'll show you the details on this here in just a second. The this material here is anchored back to the to the framing. Um, it's got a, a a deep recessed archway, Gothic arch. Uh, the, the Gothic arch, the clips that were used around this Gothic arch were basically split tail anchors at all of the at all of the joints in this archway. So those are all clipped back to the structure. And then there's a, an additional rolled steel lintel that goes around the outer perimeter. And again, I'll show you those uh, those sections in our uh, in our shop drawings. Um, there were a few little features on this with recessed lighting that we had to provide some blockouts for, but um, pretty elementary stuff as far as manufacturing goes. Um, all of the veneer material was also clipped back with split tail anchors to the to the framing, and at every horizontal, all the horizontal joints, there were tracks that were installed to. Uh, to attach the split tail kerf straps to. Uh, and again, I'll show you those in the in the details. So we'll go, let me pull up the shop drawings here. Here's the front elevation. Now our we'll start down here at the bottom. This all of this flat veneer material. I'm going to go to the section cut through the through the vertical side of this entrance, and that's on CS18. So this is a a section through the veneer, showing where the clips are at, both on the sides and at the at the bed joints on top of the pieces. This one, these details call out the specific anchor size and uh, and hardware for attachment. Zoom in on that so you can see the anchors that were spec by the engineer. Um, that attachment detail is pretty well typical all the way up. There is a relief angle and you can see that angle up about six courses right here where they've got a six by four angle and that, that angle is located right at the spring line of the joints or at the spring line of the arch rather at this joint. So there's a steel lintel, you know, where that lintel occurs, all of these pieces are notched to, to lip over the top edge of that steel angle iron, including these arch pieces. So there we've looked at a, at a, at a vertical section cut through here. And I'm gonna go move over to this archway and we'll look at this cut right through the sill or this cantilevered sill and veneer, and then it cuts through the archway.
Okay, here's the arch. Starting out with this Gothic arch section. Now this detail doesn't show it, but what they what they used here were split tail straps at the at the head joints on this arched soffit, and that's clipped up to the to the framing up above. The same thing happened here where they've got clips clipping this back to the structure at all of the head joints in the archway. This was a secondary bullnose piece that was pinned with a threaded rod. Uh, threaded rods are typically used, uh, they, they bond a little bit better than a than a than just a smooth uh, stainless steel pin. Uh, and those are epoxied into the into each piece, epoxy filled dowel holes. Um, here's the rolled steel angle going around the outside perimeter of that archway. And when you work your way up above, we got the veneer between the, the top of the arch and this is the cantilevered, this is the cantilevered area here. Now at this cantilevered area, everything is basically clipped back to the framing there's a, at this angled area, there's a blind clip where we put a threaded insert into the back of the, the back of these pieces. This is a ferrule loop insert. There's a piece of rebar running through these, these loops inside the cast stone. And this is a blind clip where they'll actually attach the clip and then hook it over this J strap that's that screwed to the to metal tracks on the in the frame wall. And as we work our way up a little bit more, you can see they've got a they've got an angle here that's that's welded to the. I I'm not sure if I don't recall if they put embeds. I assume they probably had embeds in this concrete, but this steel lintel was secured to the slab where this angle here supported the weight of the upper portion. So that angle iron is running right, right underneath this sill piece, this notched, these pieces have a notch in them. So that angle iron is running right through here, carrying the weight of all this cantilevered area. And then they've got more steel up above here. The, uh, I'll go to some of these plan cuts. This is a cross section through the upper portion of the entryway. Let me go back to the elevation and give you some. So we'll go to 86 on CS 14. which is here. So the, these were all separate veneer, veneer panels. And you can see here where they've got this jam notched out in the, uh, in the detail. We actually did change this. We try to avoid these L-shaped pieces whenever possible. These are difficult in the cast, dry cast manufacturing because we need a flat edge to, to turn the pieces onto on our production table. So, this actually, this this little notch out of the piece was eliminated, and we made a full size piece out of that. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you some tickets, some of our actual production tickets on some of these pieces. Um, but the yeah, whenever possible, you want to avoid these L shaped pieces and try to provide a flat back so that we can uh, we've got a flat surface to turn our material onto the production tables. Um, now, one other thing I want to point out is on the veneer, you can see how the how the joint pattern creates some small little pieces which are difficult to anchor back to the wall. You don't have you, you just don't have enough volume of material to to put slots in and secure it back properly. And we don't like just 
just gluing little pieces in or, or mortaring those those small pieces in so what we did is uh we made these pieces all one piece and just created a false joint um that's what you want to do to avoid little yeah. tiny little pieces plus the fact that we we have a difficult time manufacturing and tamping you know tiny little two inch by two inch pieces um they're hard to keep track of on the job and um, it's just best just to put a false joint. Um, in fact, I'll refer to one of the tickets. This was here. You can see we our production ticket shows a false joint in that piece, which is just simply a three eighths by three eighths little recess in the piece. And then they'll go back and grout that in and looks just like a joint. Um, let me go back. Now, I'll say that the false joints, we did kind of coordinate that with, with the masonry contractor. We, we kind of looked at that along with the masonry contractor. And he kind of highlighted where he wanted pieces combined. And we also did that with this one, too. I added uh, false joints to to these pieces here you can see in the in the detail there was actually a part number called out for these small pieces uh, which were eliminated and we made that change Okay, um, and go to the arch blow up here a little bit. Talk about this. The, the profile of these, these radius pieces didn't, now I'll go back to what I was saying before about the having a flat surface to, to turn these pieces over onto. There are some ways around that. This was a, th these are, obviously radius pieces, but the back side of them, because of the, the shape of the pieces, we had to actually turn these pieces up on their edge when they were taken out of the form. And when manufacturing dry cast, the, the material doesn't actually, when we, right after we compact the mix into the forms, the, the material, the molds are actually turned over. We release the form from the pieces immediately after they're, they're compacted into the forms. That's why we need that that one flat side to turn them over onto, so they cure outside the form. Um, I'll go to the cross section again to show the the profile of those pieces. Now this arch was was split, but because of that weird shape and the fact that their radius doesn't give you a flat surface, so they were actually turned on this their side edge on the production tables when they were taken out of the forms. These are the, uh, these are the production tickets for those, those are radius pieces. Now something else we did on this uh, entryway with the, uh, with the veneer, I didn't point that out on here. We also provide lifting inserts uh, just because of the, the size of this entryway and as high up as these pieces had to go. We provided uh, coil loop inserts with lifting eyes so they could, they could lift these pieces up, put them in place without a lot of handling and trying to get them up on the scaffolding. Uh, this project was also kind of con confined in some space, so they wanted to be able to lift these pieces and put them up in, into place without uh, having to put, put the whole pallet up on the, up on the scaffolding. Let's see if there's some other... Uh, 
Now this section here is through the upper portion of the entryway. This is right across the top of the window heads. Now here they've got a steel lintel over the top of the cast stone header. Now this header was notched to clear the, to get around the, the insulation board. So this does have an L shape to it. These pieces can be fabricated like this. Uh, we, we prefer not to, it's just, uh, it, it, the potential for, for cracking right through this, this creates kind of a weak spot in the piece. Um, but there, there are cases where we, we have to create that little L shape to, to accommodate the, the design intent. The, uh, these pieces here going across the top of those window heads are actually suspended from this. We put, again, the ferro loop inserts and they're bolted through this steel lintel from the top. I'll show you where those are at in the elevation here. And that's these header pieces right through here. So these, these are all suspended with exception of the, the pieces that sit on the moles. Now we also eliminate, we actually eliminated these false joints in these pieces. These are all individual pieces that were clipped back at the, at the joints. So there were some, there were some changes on this after the, the, the details were, were done prior to manufacturing, just uh, after we reviewed all the, the completed production tickets, we had to make some minor changes just to accommodate our manufacturing requirements.